Good morning, lovelies! Today we are going to talk about my top 10 favorite epic fantasy tropes. Now, what do I mean when I say epic fantasy? Epic fantasy, sometimes called high fantasy, is a subgenre of fantasy where everything takes place in a fantasy world separate from our own. Think Lord of the Rings, Wheel of Time, Stormlight Archive, Game of Thrones, that type of thing. This is not to be confused with urban or low fantasy, which takes place in our world plus some magical elements. I go way more in depth in my what's the difference video, so you can check that out if you're still confused. But now that that's out of the way, on to my favorite tropes. Number one, not medieval Europe. I think it's safe to say that the majority of fantasy fans are really sick and tired of seeing the same old copy pasting fantasy world ripped from medieval Europe. There's nothing inherently wrong with medieval Europe. It has a fascinating history. It's just been done to death. Give us epic fantasy worlds that are based off of African, Asian, or Native American societies. Those are bomb. Or set with a government system that is not a European style monarchy. Or throw in some advanced technology for a modern or even futuristic style setting that coexists with magic. Just be new. I guess that's more of a subversion of the trope than the trope itself, but moving on. Number two, the badass warrior woman. This chick shows up in almost every epic fantasy story. Sometimes she is not well written at all. She is a faux action girl, damsel in distress, or just a really flat character, and I hate that. But when she is written well, she is my favorite character. Sometimes the epic fantasy world is patriarchal, so you really only get one maybe two of these badass warrior women. Other times it's more equal, so there are a bunch of them. Either way, more women with swords, please. Number three, the non-damsel princess. If you're not gonna give your women swords, fine, give them political smarts instead. I don't mind princesses at all, so long as they don't spend the entire story being a damsel in distress, Royalty can be some of my favorite characters. Sometimes the princess is combined with the warrior woman, giving us a warrior princess. That is dope. Other times the princess will leave the fighting to other people while she focuses more on uh, the political intrigue, the public relations, and all the other things that go into running a kingdom. That is also awesome. Someone give me a buddy epic fantasy story where the ultra feminine princess and the badass warrior woman have to team up in order to do a thing, whether it's to defeat the Dark Lord or to usurp the evil king so the princess can become queen or just for a road trip. I don't care, make it happen. Number four, the hard magic system. Yet another topic that I have explored in another video. Two other videos actually. A magic system is a system of rules that a fantasy story uses to govern its magic. Is it potions or spells, or both? Can anyone do magic or only people who are born with it? Do you need a wand or can you use awesome tattoos? You know how the real world has the rules of physics? A magic system is the rules of magic and each story is going to have its own unique magic system. And they tend to exist on a spectrum from hard to soft. Yes, fine, you can insert your dick joke here, it's fine. The soft magic systems tend to be very lax on the rules. And hey, they work fine. The hard magic systems have much stricter rules and I tend to prefer them. It feels more concrete. It's something that I can wrap my head around. And the characters usually have to get really creative with how to use magic to solve their problems, which I always find really cool, and it tends to prevent the whole, a wizard did it problem that can pop up in some soft magic stories. Speaking of which, number five, witches, wizards, sorcerers, bar, magic users, all of them. They're great! Whether it's just one character or an entire school of them, I want to see how these characters operate. Are they revered or persecuted? Do they need special training or is it all instinctive and intuitive? Are there different types of magic users in this world and do they get along? It's just such a fun part of world building. Like it's half the reason that the epic fantasy genre exists. It's the magic users. The other reason is number six, adventuring across a fantasy world. Because what is the point of an epic fantasy story if you're not going on an adventure? Seriously. 
Number seven, real world social issues. This should be no surprise to my regular audience on this channel. Fantasy and science fiction are really great tools for discussing, empathizing with, and even finding solutions for real world social problems, such as racism, sexism, homophobia, poverty, classism, whatever. As long as it's handled skillfully. We've all seen those heavy handed blunders. Number eight, diversity. If you have 10 major characters and only one of them is a woman and everyone is white and straight, I'm out. I say this as someone with a Lord of the Rings tattoo on her leg. The time when you can get away with that is over. I need to see more women, more people of color, more LGBTQIA plus rep, and more people with neurodiversity or disabilities in my fiction. It can be a big part of the story, like say they're living in a homophobic society, so they have to keep their gay relationship under wraps. Or it can be just a normal part of this world and none of the characters bat an eye. I don't care, just make it happen. Number nine, the fellowship, AKA the friendship squad. Fuck the romantic subplot, give me the friendship subplot. A dynamic duo who start off hating each other and end the story as best buds. A trio of siblings adopting an orphan. A group of friends who have found family with each other. It's all good. And number 10, dragons. Because dragons are awesome. I don't know what else you want me to say here. Those are the tropes that I look for whenever I'm browsing for a new epic fantasy story. Please tell me yours in the comments below and I will see you next time. Bye lovelies!